What's up YouTube, welcome back to Celio's Network. In today's video, we're taking a look at every new deck from the newest Pokemon TCG set, Fusion Strike, which comes out on November 12th. In this video, I hope to encompass just about every new deck coming out of the set. It's hard to cover every niche or rogue idea that might pop up, but these are the ones that I think will be relevant for you to know about, or I might get asked about a lot if I didn't include them in this video. So that's kind of how I gauge which cards and decks will get featured in these every new deck videos. Shout out to my sponsors, PoTownStore.com, the best place to get PTCGO codes, and CardTroopergames.com, where you can buy Pokemon TCG booster boxes and singles. Use code CELIO for 5% off at both of those websites, and you can find all of my standard format deck lists over at PokemonCard.io. Links are in the description down below, and be sure to subscribe to this channel for daily Pokemon TCG content if you have not already, and leave a like and a comment if you enjoy the video. In this video, the lists that I will show are rough drafts to give you an idea of what these archetypes may look like. The decklist images are made from pokegear.app, so thank you to that website because uh, I have to use some Japanese scans and scans that aren't on PTCGO or any other deck builder websites yet. To be on this list, the deck has to be somewhat capable of functioning and winning and also somewhat capable of winning competitive matches. So even decks which I mark as having low potential still have some amount of potential, in my opinion. So the potential ratings go as follows. Low potential, it may work, but why play it over one of the inherently better decks? Mid potential, I would consider playing this, but it probably has a couple of weak points or underwhelming traits when compared to the high potential decks. And high potential, I either want to play this or beat it. I think it is very good. This is the list of archetypes we will talk about today, and let's get right into it with Boltund VMAX. So Boltund VMAX has uh, two attacks, 320 HP. Its main attack is pretty similar to Boltund V, which it will evolve from uh, Bolt Storm. It does 30 damage plus 30 more for each lightning energy attached to all of your Pokemon. And that will include both basic lightning and the speed lightning energy. So um, I think this deck kind of creates itself just about. You accelerate energy with Electrify and you accelerate energy with Flaffy's Dynamotor. But I don't think this will be very good because a fighting type deck should just be able to run through it. And that includes both of the Urshifus, which should both be top tier decks still in this format. And also your Flaffies, which are a large part of the deck, are weak and prone to all of the bench damage going around. Dragapult, um, the new Inteleon, Chilling Rain Inteleon, Jolteon VMAX, etc. Crabominable V is a new V Pokemon water type with Destroyer Punch. Destroyer Punch does 90 damage plus 60 more for each damage counter on your opponent's active Pokemon. So that raises, that rises quite quick. Uh, only having three damage counters on the opponent's active will let Destroyer Punch do an extra 180 damage. So for a total of 270 plus the original three damage counters. So it can do a lot of damage and it adds up quickly, but it does need three energy to do so. Um, and that's why I've built this draft having the Frostlast that can accelerate energy in addition to the Melanie and Raihan to accelerate energy because this Crabominable's only damaging attack does need three energy to do so. It also has Trigger Avalanche, discard the top two cards of your opponent's deck, so some people may try to make a, a, a mill style deck out of Crabominable, but I don't think that will be very good. Um, I feel like this deck would be carried by all of the cards that aren't Crabominable. Like, it would be carried by Suicune V and the Inteleons and Melanie, etc. So, um, this could perform, but I don't think you would ever want to really play this instead of a Suicune V Ludicolo or Suicune V 
heavy Inteleon, maybe with Metacham style deck. Um, except for the fact that Crabominable is not weak to Lightning, so if Lightning is the issue, then that is where Crabominable would have its potential. Next we have Dragapult, the Stage 2 Dragapult, which is a Fusion Strike Pokemon. Um, we'll see a lot of Fusion Strike decks in this video, but we are going in alphabetical order, so Dragapult's coming up first. Dragapult's a Stage 2 Pokemon with 150 HP. And it has the Fusion Strike emblem, which means it gets all the goodies of Fusion Strike, like the Energy and Alisa Sparkle and working well with Genesect Vs on the board. And its main attack, Fusion Strike Assault, does 30 damage for each of your Fusion Strike Pokemon in play. And that also includes your active Dragapult, which you're attacking with. So you can do a maximum of 180 damage for just a Psychic Energy. I've worked in the Hoop of V from Fusion Strike as well, since it has the ability that allows it to be either Dark or Psychic type. And you can use the Elisa Sparkle supporter to accelerate the Fusion Energy to it and uh, get that going and do damage, uh, do a lot of damage to things that are weak to either Dark or Psychic, which could be kind of a Dragapult answer that this deck can have. So just a cute little tech there. This is just a draft of a list. Uh, we're also using the Chili Salon and Cress, I believe, is the name of the supporter card, uh, which is a supporter that allows you to search for three Fusion Strike Pokemon, and I think that's very good specifically with the Dragapult Stage 2, since it can get you Dreepies, Dracloaks, and or Dragapults, and of course Genesex, etc., and everything else. Next we have Genesect V, and this is going to be a Genesect V Toxtricity Fusion Strike deck, but focusing on Genesect V as the main attacker of the deck, you'll see Metal Saucers and Metal Energy are in this draft, and I do think this has mid-potential. I think I could see this being a Tier 2-ish kind of deck. It's using the benefits of Fusion Strike, like Power Tablet, which is basically an Electro Power for Fusion Strike Pokemon, and the Oricorio that makes your Fusion Strike Pokemon take less damage, and Fusion Strike Energy, which protects it from ability pings like Inteleon and Zigzagoon and stuff like that. But this would be a two-prize attacking deck as opposed to a Mu V Max focused deck being a three-prize attacking deck. Now that Toxtricity is something I'm really interested in. It has an ability that says if all of your Pokemon in play are Fusion Strike, your opponent's Pokemon VMAX have 30 less HP, and that is stackable for each Toxtricity you have on the board, so that just makes it easier for your Genesect V to be knocking things out. Next we have Gengar VMAX, and Gengar VMAX doesn't... I, I don't think it will necessarily have a deck built entirely around it, but it just can be worked into a single strike toolbox style deck. And this is one that's kind of focusing on Gengar VMAX for the sake of making a draft for this card and for this video. Um, I personally do not think that Gengar VMAX will replace the Umbreon Urshifu single strike deck that we have seen that has been successful. I don't think it's better than either Umbreon or single strike Urshi. Um, but I think the single strike package can carry it a little bit. Umbreon VMAX is a very, very good card. I ranked it as my number one card from Evolving Skies. Single Strike Urshifu V, even without the VMAX, helps you cover type advantages. And you have Single Strike Energy that's very strong. Single Strike Scroll of Scorn, Tower of Darkness. You have Urn of Vitality, which is the only special energy recycling card we have in standard format that's specifically for Single Strike, so... I think Gengar VMAX at worst will be around the middle of the field. It'll be, it has mid potential in my opinion, but I don't think it replaces Single Strike Urshifu and Umbreon VMAX. I think it will be played, but I expect it to fall off after a few weeks. Um, I did include Echoing Horn in here since Gengar VMAX's main attack, Fear and Panic, does 60 for each Pokemon V and GX in play. So Echoing Horn can force an extra V Pokemon onto your opponent's board. Next, we'll look at Greedent VMAX, and I think there's a lot you can try to do with Greedent VMAX. It's a fun card at the very least. It has Turn a Profit for Colorless, Colorless, it does 30 damage. And if your opponent's basic Pokemon is knocked out by damage from this attack, take two more prize cards. So that can be very good. If you knock out a V Pokemon with this, 
you would take four prize cards for doing so. Um, so you can use the New Galarian Cursula to force basic V Pokemon to your opponent's discard. You can use Echoing Horn. You can use Powerful Energy and Vitality Band to make Turn of Profit actually do more damage. And of course, you can use things like Quick Shooting to put extra damage on the opponent's board before trying to take the knockouts with Greedent's Turn of Profit. The list I have here today for the video for Greedent is a Greedent with Suicune and Teleon deck list. Uh, which the idea comes from Omnipoke. Um, if you don't know who Omnipoke is, Omnipoke is the channel that brings you guys everything Pokemon. <laughs> Go check them out on YouTube. Um, so shouts out to them for this idea. Like uh, Toy Catcher, um, like a lot of these lists for this video, I make just off of theory and I draft them up until I think they look like something I would like to try out. Um, not all these lists I've tried out. I've tried out um, Inteleon's, uh, VMAX lists and the Mew lists and the Gengar VMAX lists, but most of these are just theory. And so some of these ideas, um, like using powerful colorless energy in this deck and also using Toy Catcher in this deck, uh, those ideas came straight from Omnipoke and uh, made drafting up this list for Greeted VMAX a lot easier. So I think this particular version of Greeted VMAX is in the mid potential range just because it has so many strong cards carrying it it has suicune v and the inteleon engine and melanie and we know all of that stuff is very good it also is coming into a metagame of a lot of sobbles being on the board and turn a profit can easily knock out a sobble if you just echoing horn it to the board ping it once attach a powerful colorless energy toy catcher it up and knock out that Sobble. So, um, I do think this has some potential. It just, oh, again, it, com it comes down to, is this better than playing Suicune Ludicolo? Or is it better than playing Suicune Ice Rider? And I can see instances where Green VMAX can get you win conditions that those others can't. So, we'll have to see how often this can actually work out in a competitive environment. But, I wouldn't be surprised to see it played and get some placements. Next is Let's All Roll Out, and this is one of the only two archetypes on the list today that I won't be showing a deck list for. Um, this one I just have really no hopes whatsoever for it. But if I did not make, if I did not put this one in the video, I guarantee we'd be getting some comments. Where's Let's All Roll Out? You're meta manipulating. Celio is a corporate shill. We've heard it all before. So Let's All Roll Out. Comes from this Blitzy. It has Blitzy. Blissy. Blissy. There we go. Comes from this Blissy card. If I say Blissy anymore, I'm going to not recognize Blissy as a real word. This Blissy, there I go, has the ability expert in roundness. Prevent all damage done to each of your Pokemon that has the Let's All Roll Out attack by attacks from your opponent's Pokemon V Max. So it prevents all the damage done to all of these wonderful Pokemon with Let's All Roll Out. Done by Pokemon V Max. Pokemon V Max have to evolve from Pokemon V, and if you haven't noticed, these are all very tiny Pokemon that most Pokemon V can muster up an attack to just take care of. Let's All Roll Out does 20 damage for each of your benched Pokemon that has the Let's All Roll Out attack, and Let's All Roll Out does the same thing on all of the Pokemon. So. You can do a maximum of 100 damage with Let's All Roll Out. And that means your entire bench is Pokemon with Let's All Roll Out. So this will be a prime deck or prime gimmick for YouTube videos. Like, can I beat anything on the PTCGO ladder with Let's All Roll Out? But uh, this is not a real deck. I didn't make a deck list for it. Uh, moving on. Next, we've got Mew VMAX, and uh, the mid-potential icon somehow found its way into the top right corner of this slide, but it is definitely not mid-potential, so shame on me for missing that uh, in the uh, once and twice over of the slides before I wanted to record this video. <laughs> Mew VMAX definitely doesn't have mid-potential. It's very high potential, but we also uh, aren't onto the deck list yet. So just talking about Mew VMAX and the Fusion Strike pack, it has a little bit 
Uh, Mew itself has the cross fusion strike. Choose one of your benched fusion strike Pokemon's attacks and use it as this attack. The most popular attacks we'll be using are Technoblast from Genesect V, which does 210, and then you can't use it next turn. And a Dyna Barrier from the Latios, which does 70 and prevent all damage done to this Pokemon by Pokemon V Max. Mew V Max also has its Max Miracle attack. Psychic Psychic to do 130, and this attack's damage is not affected by effects on your opponent's active Pokemon, so it's like a Shred-style attack that can go through anything for two Psychic and do 130 damage before damage modifiers. Fusion Strike also has Power Tablet, which is basically an Electro Power. During this turn, your Fusion Strike Pokemon's attacks do 30 more damage, and Fusion Strike Energy, which is a Rainbow Energy for Fusions. And while it's attached to a fusion, prevent all effects of your opponent's Pokemon's abilities done to this Pokemon. And we already went over Toxtricity earlier, which is also something that can be in the Fusion Strike decks. Um, another one we see here is the Oracorio, which prevents 20 damage done to your Fusion Strike Pokemon, or damage done to your Fusion Strike Pokemon's reduced by 20. And then the Meloetta for Psychic Colorless does 70 times the amount of Fusion Strike energy on your board. So that one maxes out at 280 before any power tablets are being used. Um, so for the Mew V Max decks, for all the uh, Fusion Strike decks, I like the Peony Engine because you can dump your hand to get any two cards. And then use Genesect's ability to just draw up into a nice hand after the Peony. And I'm also using Cross Switcher in here for that reason, because you can just Peony for double Cross Switcher, Gust, whatever you need. It also switches out your Mu V Max, which is good, because after you use Techno Buster, you have to switch. And then you can just draw back up with Genesect. You can even Peony for like one Cross Switcher and an Old Cemetery if you have to bump Path, and then play down the Old Cemetery and try to draw into the second Cross Switcher, something like that. Uh, so I think this deck is very good inherently, but it might not perform well right off the bat if everybody's super duper prepared for it, which I will be talking about in some future videos this week about how to prepare for Mew V Max with uh, some older decks, how to update them to kind of combat Mew V Max. I think it's a very counterable archetype, but uncountered and unchecked. Uh, this deck is just a powerhouse. It's just very, very strong, and in my testing, pretty consistent because you can just dump your hand, get exactly what you need, and then draw up to a new fresh hand multiple times even sometimes. It has the walling feature of Latias, uh, Mu V Max attacks for just two energy. It has free retreat. Uh, so it has a lot of things going for it, but I do think it can be countered since it relies on special energies and Genesex ability somewhat. Next is Mutoxtricity, pretty similar to the list we just looked at, it's just running a little less stuff. It doesn't have the Cross Switchers, it doesn't have the Meloetta, um, it, it doesn't have Fog Crystal, and it doesn't have Basic Psychic Energy. Other than that, it's pretty much the same exact list, but with Toxtricity to make opposing VMAX is a little easier to knock out. Um... Only one of these decks will survive in Tier 1, in my opinion. We'll have to see, does Mew V Max Genesect with or without Toxtricity end up being the more popular and more successful deck? The other one will probably just drop into Tier 2 and be the lesser played of the two variants. If I had to guess, the straightforward version one will be the one that's higher up, and the Toxtricity variant will be the one slightly down below. Next, we have Rapid Strike and Teleon V Max. I am so happy we are finally getting this Rapid Strike and Teleon and that Bascule in there because these were these came out in the summer in Japan, maybe even before the summer in the dual decks, uh, Rapid Strike and Teleon versus Single Strike Gengar. And I love this Inteleon so much with Double Gunner. You can discard a Water Energy and then do two damage counters to two of your opponent's benched Pokemon. And G-Max Spiral does 70 or 140 if you return an Energy attached to this Pokemon. Since it's Rapid Strike, you can just uh, return the Rapid Strike Energy and then Sharol your Pokemon next turn. Basculin Swarm the Wound is a very strong attack. So let's get into some lists with this Rapid Strike Inteleon VMAX. Here we just have a straight Sharol focused Rapid Strike and Teleon VMAX. I've seen some people saying four Sharol or maybe even uh, Palpad with the three Sharol or Palpad with the four Sharol, whatever. Um, 
Some people are foregoing the basic water energy in their drafts. This is a draft with basic water energy. Who knows which one will end up being the better one. I kind of like this where we can double gunner a lot. We have escape ropes to force things to the bench so they can get double gunnered. Uh, we do play the one boss, but most turns we're going to be looking to Marnie or Cheryl. And uh, just G-Max spiraling that Rapid Strike energy back to our hand and then reattaching it next turn. So uh, it allows us to Cheryl without the negative effect of discarding an energy. It also means they can't discard our energy on the opponent's turn with Hammer or send it to the bottom of the deck with Fan of Waves or anything like that. Um, so I think this deck is going to be very good. Uh, not against things that are lightning type. So Bolton VMAX, Jolteon VMAX, stay away. But uh, doing 140 and next turn you heal and just have that energy ready to go from your hand if you didn't get Marnied. And being able to do that multiple times, having Basculin as a single price cleanup crew and spreading so much damage on the bench between your quick shootings and your double gunners. So you can be taking out Sobbles, Drizziles, opposing Octillaries, opposing Hound Dooms, things like that. I think this card and this uh, archetype of Rapid Strike and Teleon VMAX has a lot going for it. Next is pairing it with Urshifu VMAX. This is going to be more of an Urshifu deck, more like uh, Tord Reklev's Urshifu Melanie is what this one's kind of going for, but just with the Rapid Strike and Teleon VMAX there. As uh, a Melanie activator, you can discard your waters with the double gunner and also get some extra spread damage. So before go the Passimian in this list, uh, this list, I definitely think my draft of it needs a little work. It's hard to fit in all of these Pokemon, you know? Uh, so maybe you just go with a one, one line of rapid strike and tell on V max and hope you don't prize it. Uh, but this one, I definitely think could be very good. I think in a perfect world, this deck would be phenomenal, but there's a lot going on. So, the question is, is this list, does the list need to be improved? And when it gets to a perfect state or a close to ideal state, is the list consistent enough to perform at the highest of levels? Right now I'm saying it has mid potential, but it is a cool variant of Rapid Strike Urshi or Rapid Strike Inteleon pairing the two together. And I would like to see it do well. And last we have Inteleon and Teleon. Uh, two of the new Inteleon VMAX, two of the old Inteleon VMAX. At this point, the old Inteleon VMAX is a card that I've loved, but it is underwhelming for its second attack, which does 160 active and 60 to the bench. That should be very good, but because it needs three energy to do so, um, it's hard to pull off consistently, and it's hard to recover from it being knocked out since it needs three energy. So I've included that Frost Lass with Frost Over in this list, and also done a Chinchino engine for this. Um, working with the Scoop Up Net stuff, we got the Snorlax, the Zigzagoon, the Level Balls, uh, Evo Incense can all get the Minchino, Chinchinos, the Snow Runs, the Frost Lass, all that kind of stuff, um, and still using the the new Inteleon VMAX, mostly for its double gunner, but it could also G-Max Spiral if we need it to. Um, there's also a world where you build this based around Hydra Snipe, Inteleon VMAX from Marble Clash's first attack, which does 60 in return and energy. You could build this as a disruption type deck that, uh, you know... Um, Beats down the opponent a little at a time with the double gunners on the bench while you're Hydra sniping the active. I chose to go with this variant of the list, but these are all meant to be baseline drafts that you can work off of and also kind of prepare yourself for what the field might look like. If you see, you know, your opponent playing both Inteleons or something, you might be able to say, oh, it might look a little bit like that and start to develop an idea of what you're playing against in your head. And lastly, I have Serena V here. This was a concept from, again, from Omnipoke. Shout out Omnipoke, the channel that brings you everything Pokemon. Um, I saw Jack and Joe play Serena V on their tabletop simulator testing. It's on their YouTube channel if you want to check it out. Um, they didn't have a deck list, but honestly, I don't see this being a good deck. Uh, maybe they see something I don't see in Serena V, or maybe they've also hopped off the Serena V train by now as well. 
But I wanted to touch on it because this was another one I had to get in the comments saying, why aren't you including Serena V? Um, so here's here's Serena V, low potential. And that's everything. So I hope you guys enjoyed this video featuring every new deck or asterisk virtually every new deck from fusion strike the brand new pokemon tcg expansion coming out on november 12th if you enjoyed the video please subscribe to the channel for daily pokemon tcg content and leave a like and a comment check out my sponsors cardtroopergames.com potownstore.com and pokemoncard.io all the links you'll need are in the description down below and uh including my twitch i will be streaming a ton of fusion strike content on there as i always do when new sets come out so have yourself a great day thanks for watching and i'll see you next time here on celio's network